Hello, good morning, myself, Dr. Bal Sumanyam, working as assistant professor in the Department of Zoology, Government First Grade College in Tamil. So today, today we are going to discuss about the respiration in the Siddhartha Pura. Now respiration, now this topic is a subtopic in the Phylum Arthur Pura and uh, now respiratory structures in Arthur Pura, Arthur Pahars, constitute three-fourths of the animal kingdom and inhibit in the variety of habitats. Like what are the habitats in which the arthropods belong to? They breathe in air uh, through the trachea. They also respire in the water that by means of gills and also some found uh, both land and water. Particularly the dragonflies, they are found uh, in the water, larvals found in the water as well as they found in the air. And that is, they respire both the uh, trachea and also to the gills. Now, respiratory structures. Now, what is the definition of respiratory structures, and why these respiratory structures are very really important in any other any other animal, particularly not only the arthropoda, or in the case of the vertebrates, or in the case of the lower animals like the protozoans like for example amoeba see respiration is the uh, defined as the biological oxygen as the food molecules so as to release the useful energy in the form of ATP now that is the physiological definition respiration can be defined as the biological oxygen as the food molecules so without the gases the food molecules are not oxidized and the food molecules so when they are not oxidized they are not able to produce the energy. So, simple example, we can see that a candle will light or will glow in the presence of oxygen. In the absence of oxygen, this candle doesn't glow. Similarly, the fuel molecules, which the food molecules we are going to consume, that is the glucose molecules are going to be uh, able to give energy in the, form of, in, the, in the presence of oxygen. In the presence of oxygen, so in the, in the higher animals we know that uh, we have the aerobic respiration, that is the respiration taking place with the help of oxygen. So in that context, see this oxygen is uh, very important uh, as far as uh, uh, a living organism is concerned so to break down the food molecules. So therefore respiration can be defined as the biological oxidation of the food molecules so as to release the useful energy in the form of ATP. Now, in the case of the arthropoda, we have the various types of the uh, respiratory organs, particularly the gills, the trachea, uh, the book lungs, and uh, the, uh, the uh, book uh, lungs, and uh, one more is the book gills. So here, four types of respiratory structures has to be discussed in this chapter. Now here, in any case, so this respiration here, uh, in the first we see about the respiratory system in the case of the prawn. So in the case of the prawn, there is a pelmion. Uh, this uh, belongs to the class Crustacea of the Phylum arthropoda. Now the gills are the primary respiratory organs in the prawn. So primary and uh, this main organs, respiratory organs are the gills. Now the gills are situated on the lateral side of the cephalothorax. Now in the case of the prawn, you know that the uh, head and the thorax are fused from the cephalothorax. Now, on each side of the cephalothorax and beneath the brachial stages, there are eight gills, each attached with the thoracic wall by the gill root. So here, there is a eight gills attached with the, with the thoracic wall by the gill root. Seven of these eight gills are serial arranged. Seven of these eight gills are serial arranged, while the eight gill remains concealed under the second one. Uh, on its dorsal side. The eighth gill remains concealed under the second one on its dorsal side. So eighth gill is not absorbed clearly but is uh, under the second gill on its dorsal side. So therefore eight gills are there in the case of the prana. Now here we can observe they clearly this uh, respiratory structures in arthropoda, particularly the gills in the case of the pelmion, respiratory organs in the gill. So here, noting that brachiostegite on one side has been removed to expose the gill chamber. So brachiostegite 
is a egg covering just uh, it's open to remove the or uh, to show the gill chamber now here so this is a first uh, gill first gill podobrac and uh, this is a uh, second gill as well as the eighth gill here see second gill and eighth gill that is a second gill beneath the second gill there is a eighth gill then uh, this is a fourth gill then the uh, uh, that seventh gill third uh, sorry first to second first to second third fourth uh, fifth sixth seventh gill so here the uh, plural bank the seventh gill is called plural bank the first gill called uh, podobrac and uh, the second and eighth gill are called orthobrac orthobrac see orthobrac jointed gill so here this uh, eight uh, gills are there on each side so therefore eight pairs of uh, gills are there on the nerve uh, itself so here scaphoganite first maxillipede and uh, the second maxillipede uh, third maxillipede so these are the different types of cephalic appendages in the case of the front now here you can observe the gills so this is the eight uh, gills what we observe in the case of the arthropoda now histologically histologically the gill base has three layers the gill has three layers outermost cuticle the middle epidermis and the innermost connective tissue mass so we know that uh, gill is highly vascularized and uh, there is the outermost cuticle middle epidermis and thin connective tissue mass so these are the three parts of the gill base each gill plate consist of mono layer of two types of alternately arranged cells pigmented and transparent the cells remain covered by cuticle on either side so the cuticle is there and uh, the connective tissue is there and it is uh, pigmented and uh, transparent now based on the position and of origin the gills are of three types see podobranch podos refer to the foot and brac branch refer to the gills podobranch this is a first gill from the anterior side is a podobranch which remains attached with the coxa of the second maxillary now this is what we are talking about the first gill first gill called podobranch that is attached from the anterior side and attached to the anterior side of the podobranch which uh, remains uh, attached to the cox of the second maxillary so this is the type of first gill called podobranch the second gill and uh, eighth gill are uh, they second and eighth gill are called orthobranch that is orthos means joint see attached with the arthrodial membrane of the third maxillary the second and eighth gills are orthobranch so these are jointed uh, gills attached with the arthrodial membrane of the third maxillary bead so this is second type of uh, gill orthobranch third type of gill is called plurobranch so pleuros to the side so that is attached with the outer border of the thorax uh, and over the articulating surface of the walking legs so here the third to seventh uh, gills are called pleurobranch so pleuros to the third sorry, side so the articulating uh, surface of the walking legs walking legs so they attach to the outer border of the thorax and over the articulating surface of the walking legs so third to seventh gills are called pleurobranch so this is a first gill second and eighth gill are here so second gill is observed and eighth gill is concealed and third fourth fifth sixth seventh gill are called pleurobranch third to seventh gills are called pleurobranch so this is one pleurobranch where you observe the axis gill axis and gill plate now each branch of afferent canal opens with a transverse canal from where the blood passes into the long lateral longitudinal canals so here this afferent canal opens to the transverse canal see afferent canal it is supplying the blood and it goes to the transverse canal and uh, to the lateral longitudinal canal subsequently distributed within the gill plates through the marginal channels 
following oxidation, the food from the marginal canals return to the median canal and then to the afferent branchial vessel which it converts to the heart. So here the afferent branchial vessel is conveying to the heart and afferent vessels are there. So here afferent branchial vessel channels they move to the transfer channels and lateral nodular channels and from there to the marginal channels and from there to the median nodular channels and from there the afferent branchial channels and from there to the heart. So during the flow of the water currents, the vascularized surface of the brachiosteroids, gill centrifugoids are bathed with the water. As the gases exchange occurs through these areas, that is dissolved oxygen is taken in, carbon dioxide is passed out. The carbon dioxide mixed with water expelled to the ventral region of the gill chamber due to the movement of these scaphoganite and hypoporites. So in the prawn, the respiratory pigment is hemocyanin, dissolved in the plasma and carries oxygen to the tissue cells. So here, this afferent branchial channels, so they carry the deoxygenated blood from the various parts of the body and from there, this uh, blood goes to the transfer channels, longitudinal nodular channels, marginal channels and medial nodular channels and from there, afferent branchial So next uh, is the respiratory system in the limulus. So the most specialized gills are seen in the xiphosians. This is where these abdominal appendages bear the plate-like book gills. So in the case of the limulus or the king crab, we will find the book gills. So this is a diagram of the limulus or king crab, where there is a chelicerae, pedipalps, ambulatory legs, pusher legs, Operculum and book gills you can observe. It. So gills are found by the evagination of the posterior borders of opistostoma in segments from 9 to the 13th. So the gills contain nearly 150 lamellae which look like the delicate leaves of the books. So therefore, these gills contain 150 lamellae. So these lamellae are the platelet structures. So, which look like the delicate leaves of the books. So, in most crustaceans, the gills are not found with the special gill chamber, but in decapods, the carapace extends laterally over the gills to house them in the special chamber. In such forms, with the chamber, the current of water through enters through one end and after bathing the gills, passes out through another direction. In crustaceans and zephosurians, gases exchange take place in the gills between the blood and the water. Now here we can observe this, uh, the gills of the embolus possess uh, many platelet structures called lamellae. These lamellae like parallel to each other, resembling the page of the book, hence named of gills. So here we can observe this, uh, what they call this uh, uh, book gills. So these are 150 lamellae, now from where this uh, exchange of gases occur. Now here we find the ostia and uh, pericardial membrane. So this is a heart, heart supplying the, uh, that is uh, blood from various parts of the body enter to the uh, book gills and uh, from the book gills there is aeration, exchange of gases and oxygenated blood goes to the heart and from heart uh, it goes to the various parts of the body. Now gills are crescent shaped. Now summary here, the gills are crescent shaped and their size increases gradually from anterior to the posterior shape direction in the case of the prawn. Now each gill has a slender axis or base in which rhombidal rows or rhombidal leaf like touches gill plates are arranged like the pages of book. These type of gills are called phyllobranchs. So summary here, the gills are crescent shaped and their sizes increase gradually from anterior to the posterior direction. Each gill has a slender axis or base 
on which double rows of umbrella leaf like leaflets are arranged like the pages of the book. Now, this type of gills are called philoplates. Summary here Limulus. The gills of Limulus possess many plate like structures called lamellae. These lamellae lie parallel to each other, resembling the page of book, hence they called book gills. Okay, finally, references. So, we have the quote ball by Indo Debrates uh, textbook and uh, Jordan Verma and uh, Indo Debrates by Jordan Verma and uh, Ekamana Thayer, Indo Debrates, Indo Debrates by Dami and Dami and Indo Debrates by Sandosa. So, thank you for listening.